How to start a hard money lending business using other people's money. Hard money lending is one of the best business models that I know of out there right now. Uh, credit markets are tightening up. The banks are pulling back. And uh, I think it's a great time to start a hard money lending business. And today I'm going to show you how to start a hard money lending business by leveraging other people's money or capital. And this is going to blow you away. So stick around. Hey, if you're interested in the hard money lending business and you're watching these videos, I really appreciate if you'd subscribe to our channel, um, hit the bell icon and be notified every time we come out with a new uh, topic for hard money lending. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, my name is Rodney Miller. I'm a hard money lender in Oklahoma City. I operate uh, out of Oklahoma City, but I loan in Oklahoma, Tulsa, pretty much the state of Oklahoma and Dallas, Fort Worth metropolitan area. If you're into hard money lending, you want to learn more, You've come to the right place. Stick around. So there's never been a better time than to get into hard money lending. It's 2024. Banks are tightening up. We have several things going on. Uh, this kind of reminds me of 2008 a little bit, a little bit different. But um, banks are starting to tighten up. They're pulling back um, on their lending criteria. They're getting a little tougher to, to uh, qualify for loans. They're they're offering less LTV, and that just pushes more people to hard money lending. So. I think it's a great time to kind of start uh, looking at, uh, if you've been looking at hard money lending, thinking about getting into it, it's a really good time to get into it. Because I think the the pairing of banks pulling back in the next couple of years and the increase in deal flow, which I think will start happening here pretty soon. We know that commercial markets are really softening up and then single family easy follows that. But there's like in 2008, there's probably going to be a lot of deals come up and a lot less capital from banks to finance those deals. And that's where you can make a ton of money if you are a hard money lender. But you know, the the main thing that I get the pushback from people to give me uh, grief when I tell them they should start a hard money lending business is they tell me that, well, I have no money or I've got a little bit of money, but I'm gonna run out really quickly and all that. And I try to explain to them, you don't have to use your own money. There's a way to do this with other people's money. And if you do it smartly and you're uh, a fairly decent salesperson and you got a good loan product that you develop, you can uh, get other people to put their money in these deals and make really good money off of them. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. So let's talk about how to start a hard money lending business using other people's money. First thing, you're going to need access to three things. Obviously, you're going to need access to capital. It's either your, your own capital or other people's capital. You're going to need access to deal flow, uh, meaning just borrowers. You're going to have to find people that want to borrow money. And then you're going to have to um, have access to people, systems like software systems to, to do to handle your loans. You know, people internal and external. You can have a loan processor if you get big enough. You can do most of this yourself in the beginning, but eventually you're going to want a loan processor to process your loans. You're going to want somebody to go out and do valuations. You're going to want a good attorney. There's just a whole, you know, good title companies. You know, there's, there's just people you're going to want to build your team with. And this video is not really to cover that. But that's something you're going to have to do. So three things, capital, other people, either your money or other people's money or a mix of that. Deal flow, you're going to have to get out there and find the deals by going to the real estate clubs or doing some advertising in the market for real estate investors looking for money. And then you're going to have to uh, be able to internally process those loans with employees or some help or, or other you know software systems. Hard money is a very simple uh, business. Those are the three things that you will need to get the hard money business going. So whether or not you use other people's capital, it's really important in the beginning when you're starting a hard money lending business is to define your business model. You need to define what kind of loans are you going to make? Where are you going to operate? Uh, how are you going to protect yourself? Um, and you need to uh, get all that down so you know it for yourself. I call it the deal box and we'll explain. I'll explain it a little bit later. but. So you know yourself what your criteria is going to be and you try not to vary from that too much, uh, but also so you can sell that to other people to get them to invest in your deals. They're going to want to know why these are, deals are safe, how they're going to get their money back, how long they're going to get their money back over what period of time. But but most importantly, you're going to have to explain to them how they're not going to lose money on these deals or how you're going to protect them. And you're going to explain that by uh, explaining your deal box or your your basic business model. So your business model is basically how you're going to operate your business, but but what opportunities you're going to take advantage of and which ones you're going to turn away. And that's kind of your deal box. You're going to set up, what am I okay loaning on? And what is my criteria? And what am I not comfortable loaning on? And so let's just go through some examples of that. Let's just take a loan example. Let's say your deal box is, I'm going to loan on single family homes 
in the Oklahoma City Metroplex only to seasoned real estate investors that have two years experience and five deals under their belt. Well, every deal you look at, that's the lens you're going to look at it through. You're going to look at every deal and you're going to like, do they have five years experience or five years deals under the belt, two years experience is it in Oklahoma city. So if a deal comes up in Tulsa, are you going to look at it? If it doesn't fit in your deal box, probably not because it doesn't fit in your deal box. So that's kind of like how you're going to set your criteria. And there's many points you're going to have to cover on that, but the, I'm just covering a really high level, simple view. I'm like, you're going to have to, other things you'll need to decide. What's my loan to value? Like the house is worth a hundred thousand. What's the maximum amount I will loan on that house? My loan to value is 65% of the after repaired value. So if the house fully repaired is worth hundred grand, the most I'll loan is $65,000. Don't ask me for 70% LTV or 80. I won't do it. My deal box says 65% and that's all I will loan you on that. Another deal is uh, what, what lien position? I require a first lien position on my loans. I want to be the first mortgage holder or deed of trust holder on that loan. I don't want anybody in front of me. I will not take second mortgages. And so if you bring me a deal and it's got a first on it and you're not willing to lose the first, you want me to take a second position, that does not fall in my deal box. I will not take it. Personal guarantees. Are you going to make the borrower sign a personal guarantee? So if the deal goes bad, um, if it's a recourse loan, you get to go after uh, the borrower. If there's any shortfalls, you know, in what you get out of the property, uh, let's say you're short $20,000, you can go after the uh, borrower and get them to pay you the difference because um, they signed a personal uh, guarantee. If you don't have that, then you just get what you get. If, if the property goes to auction and brings 100000 but you're owed one hundred twenty, well, you have to eat that $20,000. So you're going to require the borrower to sign a personal guarantee? I do. Are you going to require their spouse to sign a personal guarantee? I get a lot of pushback because a lot of times they don't want their spouse to sign one. I'm like, well, if your spouse doesn't uh, trust you on this deal, then I don't either. So I always require the spouse to sign. So other criteria you might set in your deal box is territory. Like I said earlier, are you just going to do your city? Do you Are you just comfortable loaning there? I started loaning in Oklahoma City, but then I Tulsa is an hour and a half away, and I, I decided I would take on that market because I can get there pretty quick and look at it. So then I my territory opened up and my deal box got bigger. So I would loan in Oklahoma City and in Tulsa. And then after I got that mastered, I kind of went over the whole state, started loaning in the whole state of Oklahoma. And then when I felt comfortable with that, I wanted bigger deals. So I, I opened up Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex and started loaning there. I grew up there. I kind of know the area. So so my deal box now is Oklahoma City, Tulsa, the Dallas Fort Worth Metro. And so if you bring me a deal there, uh, that's the first step in being in the deal box. It's in those territories. If you bring one in in, uh, in Kansas City, Missouri, not going to be interested. It does not fit my deal box. So once you have your criteria down and you have your deal box together and you know how you're going to protect yourself, your loan to value, your forced mortgage position, where you're going to loan, uh, all those things in place, that's how you're going to sell your investors. And you're going to go after investors and you're going to explain to them why these are safe loans. And you're going to explain to them, look, Mr. Investor, I, I'm only going to deal with seasoned investors in Oklahoma City and I'm going to loan keep my loans at 65% of the ARV. We're going to use a seasoned title company. We're going to get the first mortgage position and um, we're going to be protected. Uh, if these things go bad, we're going to be in a good spot to take them back and we're going to get paid regardless of whether they go bad or not. And so that's how you're going to sell your investors. And we're going to talk here a minute about how you're going to find your investors and, and how you're going to uh, build a list of investors that want to invest in these loans with you. Hey, I've got a question for you. Have you ever thought about starting a hard money lending business? Are you a fix and flipper? Are you a, uh, do you own a bunch of rental properties and thought about getting into the lending business? Let me know in the comments below. So now we're going to talk a little bit about how you're going to pay your investors and how much you're going to pay your investors. I'm just going to use me as an example. And I think I'm pretty standard. I've got a lot of friends and hard money lenders across the country and we're all pretty close. So we're like 13% and three points is what we charge. Some are four and 12, but it's pretty standard. We're all kind of in the same area. So let's just use, we're going to use the 13% and three points model. So we're loaning money. And let's just use a, we're going to use a deal, a $200,000 deal. And we're going to make a loan to, an, to a uh, real estate investor at 13% and three points. Okay, here we are. I know this is not uh, very uh, slick, but this is the best I can do. So we're loaning money at 13% and three points. $200,000 loan, 13%, three 
three points. Okay. Um, we got the investor. Now, when I say there's two investors, the real estate investor we're learning to, and then there's the capital investor bringing money to the deal. This is the capital investor. This is the person that's funding the loan for us. So we loan this money to a real estate investor. We'll say this is the investor here. Um, so we're going to get 13% and three points on our money. And, you know, we do one year term loans. And so we're just going to, instead of me breaking this down into monthly payments, I'm just going to do a one, this went full year, one year term, which a lot of ours do, or they get right up to the one year term. So if, if this $200,000 loan at 13% and three points goes to a one year term. So 13% of $200,000 is $26,000. The three points on $200,000 is $6,000. Good so far? All right. So we got $26,000. We got a total of $32,000. Yes, these are very lucrative. This is one loan for $200,000. We'll make $32,000 in a one-year period of time. That's not even including late fees or any other of the fees that we that we charge. Okay. So you, you are the hard money lender. You are the hard money business owner. You're going to get the $6,000. You don't give any of the points to the, um, to the investor. So you get the 6,000. And then what's your split going to be? My split for investors is 10%, 3% on this, on this 13 points. So investor gets 10%. And I get 3% of the monthly payments that come in. So on this deal, uh, if it went the full year term, the investor is going to make $20,000. Okay. And I'm going to make 6,000. I've already made 6,000 points. I'm going to make $6,000 in interest. Total of $12,000 that I made on this one loan. The investor made $20,000. The loan pays off. We get our principal back uh, and we, we go back and we do it again. Now, think about this. The investor made $20,000 on their $200,000 investment in one year. That's a good 10% return. I made $12,000 with zero money in the deal um, on, on their $200,000 loan. Got them a good return, made $12,000. It's kind of a win-win situation. I mean, I'm telling you, it, it, this is one of the best business models I've seen out there. Now, this does not factor in when I make a loan, we charge a $400 valuation fee, which I could keep, but I give to somebody else to do the valuations. $695 origination fee. Late fees are 10%. So a 10% late fee on this would be a pretty good chunk of money. So all the fees go to you. This They get 10%. That's it stops there. You get all the fees, late fees. If it goes into default, these things go to 24% interest. If we have to literally chase them down and they, and they try to bail on us or something, we, we bump our loan up to 24% interest. And then we pursue foreclosure if we need to. Now on that, we give the investor gets bumped up to 14%. We get bumped up to, um, we get the 10%. We pursue the foreclosure. When the deal closed, everybody gets paid off. They get 14% of the money. We get 10% of our, our money. We get to keep our points, all the late fees, everything's taken care of. And that's kind of basically how you pay an investor on a hard money loan. Finally, we're going to talk about what do you find these investors? Uh, what do you find people that want to put money in these deals? And it's really a lot easier than you think it is. People are looking for places to put money. Stock market's doing okay, but it, it's up and down. People are looking for more stable assets to put their money into. And, you know, a lot of you guys watching this, you know, a lot of folks before they become hard money lenders start off as fix and flippers. So you already probably know private capital. You've talked to people and have them invest in some of your fix and flip deals. It's the same concept. You're going to go out and find these people and you're going to uh, pitch them an idea. You're going to say, you know, I'm loaning money to real estate investors at very safe uh, LTVs uh, and we're paying a really good high interest rate, a 10% interest rate. And uh, I'll handle everything. I'll collect all the payments and I'll just give you money every month, put it into your account. You can use your IRA, whatever, or your personal funds, your savings, your self-directed IRA, whatever. And uh, I'll just provide you with a really good return. I'll do all the work. And for that, uh, I'll pay you 10% and I'll keep 3% for collections and I'll get to keep all the points and fees. And that's kind of how it works. So how you find these people is very simple. You get your first point of contacts and that's going to be the people you know on Facebook, your friends and family, 
business associates, people like that. LinkedIn, Facebook, your first point of contact, you reach out to them, you tell them what you're doing and um, you show them your business plan. And then uh, eventually the way it works is people kind of want to dip their toe in the water. They, they're usually really slow to act. They'll give you $50,000 to invest. And then when they see that it's a real thing and you start paying them on time and they see that it's really easy money and it's, it's a good 10% return, they start giving you more money. All of a sudden they find half a million dollars and you know, they give you a lot. And then they're telling their friends about you. That's your, that's your second group. That's your cir second circle around the first circle of influence is your second circle. Those people are going to, th that you give a good return to, are going to start talking to their friends and family and they're going to start bringing you deals. And that's how this thing exponentially explodes and, and, and gets bigger. So all in all, that's kind of a high level view of how you utilize or uh, leverage other people's money to build a hard money lending business. A lot of people think that you have to be financially set and wealthy to start a hard money lending business. It is absolutely not the case. Most hard money lenders I know use other people's money and that what I just explained to you is how they go about doing it. Now, the, the key to these businesses is to get more and more of your money in the deal, making that 13% three points on your money and using less other people's money because that's where the magic really starts to happen. If you can slowly start converting these loans over to mostly your money, you will you will get very rich very fast. And so that's the key of most hard money lenders. Start with other people's money, use some of your money, but eventually use more of your money than the other people's money. Eventually use all your money and you don't need the, uh, the other lenders, but they will get you where you need to be from the get go. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. We have a ton of free stuff below. Um, we have borrowers, free reports. Uh, we have a house flipping report. If you look below, a, a link to that. Um, how to guarantee a hard money loan below if you're looking for a hard money loan. There's also a link to our loan application on there. Um, for investor, we have a free uh, co-investor brochure explaining how we work with investors to fund some of these loans and pay 10%. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, I'll watch this other video, five things you need to know about hard money loans in 2023. Please like and subscribe to our channel. We appreciate you. See you next time.